last video that I did was on the disappearance of Dennis Martin. This is a well-known case. It's It happened in 1969. It's never been solved. This young boy was on a camping, hiking trip with his family in the Great Smoky Mountains near Cades Cove and was um, playing games with his brother and some other boys and disappeared and was never seen again. And while I was doing some research on his case, I came upon some other missing persons, well-known cases from the Great Smoky Mountains. This is another missing person from the Great Smoky Mountains. And I think I had already actually made a video about him. I'll have to go back through my uh, searches of my videos and make sure. But this is Derek Luking. Now, Derek went missing March the 17th, 2012 from Cherokee, North Carolina. This is also in the Smoky Mountains. He was a white male. He was 24 years old at the time of his disappearance. Five foot 10 and about 215 pounds. He was last known to be wearing a gray hooded sweatshirt, dark colored track pants with a white stripe down each leg, dark colored sneakers and a waterproof watch. It's believed that he was carrying a camouflage print real tree rain gear and a black or dark blue book bag type of uh, backpack. He was, um, his white Ford Escape was accounted for. He, his car was found. Now, Derek had brown hair and hazel eyes and he goes by the nickname Duroc, and he may also go by the initials DJ. He also wears prescription glasses, which he may have been wearing. He has a tattoo of Japanese character on his um, upper left chest. Now, the circumstances is... Luking was last seen leaving the Microtel Inn and Suites in Cherokee, North Carolina at 4 a.m. on March 17, 2012. His white Ford Escape was found in the Newfound Gap area in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park near the Tennessee-North Carolina border. No one recalled having seen Derek himself and his family had been trying to reach him since he arrived there. Inside the vehicle was a note simply saying, Don't follow me. Liu King had purchased maps of the Great Smoky Mountains, a sleeping bag and a tent, as well as some other supplies as part of a survival, military survival manual, a knife, a Coleman combination compass and thermometer, a hundred feet of black parachute cord, a headlamp, a pocket knife, um, a flashlight, and a fire starter. So it sounded like he was going out there to stay for a while. He was planning this. What other people might believe would have been the items that somebody would pack with him if they were going to stay a few nights or a week or longer in the camping you know, in the woods to camp. But the note led people to believe that he was actually going out there to disappear and didn't plan to come back. However, he left many of these items, including the tent and the sleeping bag behind in the car. He worked in the Peninsula Behavioral Health Center in Tennessee. He was an aide. His family said that he was an experienced and avid camper and a fan of survivalist television shows like Fire Grills and some of those types of shows. They think he may have gone into the park intentionally. Um, they believe he went into the park intentionally to try out his own survival gear um, skills, but he left behind quite a bit of the stuff that he bought to bring with him. The circumstances of his disappearance are unclear and remain unsolved. 
this is just um, kind of a summary of the events. Rangers at the Great Smoky Mountains National Park have been searching for Derek Joseph Luking, 24, of Louisville, Tennessee, who was reported missing by co-workers and family members March 15th. He was reportedly last seen at 4 a.m. on the 17th at the Microtel Hotel in Cherokee, North Carolina. Since that time, rangers have searched over 40 miles of the Appalachian Trail and other connecting trails radiating from Newfound Gap, and they have not found any conclusive signs of the missing man. He had attended a Christian college and had graduated and was working as a psych tech at a local psychiatric hospital. Derek didn't show up for work, and when he didn't answer his cell phone, his roommate alerted the family and told them that he had not arrived for work that morning. His family left their home in Virginia and drove through the night to Tennessee. Ryan and family members checked his computer and found a search of the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. They also found that he had made a reservation for a hotel. Video footage showed that he had stayed at the Microtel Inn in Cherokee and left the hotel at around 4 a.m. On the bed of the hotel, his family found a Bible, and on the floor was a liquor bottle. Video footage showed that he was only carrying a day pack, but the other items that he had packed or bought a tent, sleeping bag, and all this other survival type stuff he had left behind in the car. The family would later research and find that Derek had left his home on the 14th. Over the next two days, he had purchased over $1,000 in camping supplies from Bass Pro Shop, Knife Works, and Coleman's. The family also found that he had stayed at the Motel 6 on the 14th. He had stayed in the Smoke Mount Campground on the 15th and the Microtel Inn on the 16th. The family drove through the area where Derek had traveled and found his white Ford Escape on the 17th of March at 830 at the Newfound Gap parking area. This is an area that accesses the Appalachian Trail. The car held more strange clues. A note stating, don't look for me, was found in the car along with his wallet and car key. The note was not addressed to anyone. In the rear of the escape was all the survival gear that he had bought. And this was quite a bit of survival, survival gear, including food. Family and friends reported that Dirk had recently started drinking. This was highly unusual for him. However, the college he recently graduated from forbid their students to take part in those activities. He could have been taking part in those activities and hiding that. He was reportedly unhappy in his job. People say that it was a very depressing and stressful job and that the many of the employees would also become stressed and depressed themselves. I, I can imagine working in a psychiatric unit. However, his family disputes any notion that he was suicidal. However, others who worked with Dirk and knew him said that he was acting a bit odd. He'd been struggling with his mental health and had also started to become impulsive. Now, he was 24 at the time. This could have been the beginnings of some bipolar disorder that maybe just had not shown, he hadn't shown signs of this before. A 
An official search started, and there were about 60 people and three dog teams assigned to continue the search for Liu King. The searchers had been organized into 14 teams and walked more than 70 miles of trail surrounding the Newfound Gap area. They explored the area along the trail where it would appear relatively easy to get in and out and onto other trails and off the trail. They the search included multiple different days, including different dog different dog trackers. They used a helicopter and a night helicopter, and they found no clues of Durek. It is believed that Durek did have some necessary supplies with him. Based upon the contents of his car, they believe that he had purchased a Bar Grill survival tool pack. Family gathered a group on the 24th and 25th and continued a search for Durek. They had a total of over 60 people show up to hike and hand out flyers. Hikers showed up hiked a total of 175 miles and handed out over 3,000 flyers to people in the park and the surrounding areas. The Great Smoky Mountain Park Service repelled down some high cliffs but did not find anything. What made things more complicated is that another man went missing the same week. On March the 18th, 2012, Michael Cochini, 23, was also last seen by his friends on Sunday, March the 18th. Rangers located his abandoned car along a parkway along Newfound Gap Road about one mile south of the park's Sugarland Visitor Center. The walkway does not connect to the park's trail system, and there would be no reason that backpackers would leave vehicles there overnight. The walkway is a short, easy trail that extends into the woods a short distance and comes to a dead end along the Little Pigeon River. The search was called off after more than a week of efforts turned up nothing. Six months later, in August, a group of park employees who were walking around on a field study discovered items thought to belong to Cochini near the area where his vehicle was parked. They found remains, and these were later confirmed to be Cochini's dental records. Human remains, including a partial skull, were discovered. Cochini, 23 years old, was a Nashville resident. He had been temporarily staying in Gatlinburg. He was last seen by friends at the Walmart in Sevierville at about 2 p.m. on the 18th. Cochini's death is believed to be suicide based upon undisclosed items found with his remains. So what happened to Durek? through the mountains, come out on the other side and decide to start a new life. Um, did he seek suicide and his body was never found? Did he encounter someone with bad intentions? The outcome of Derek's case is still unknown. He is uh, still a missing person and his so the case of Derek Luking is also still a mystery. And the other person that they named as one of the five people who were still missing in the Smoky Mountains was Christopher Lee Cessna. Family members reported Cessna 45 of Cary, North Carolina, missing on April 27, 2011. His park officials later discovered his 2009 Audi at the Newfound Gap parking area. Relatives reported that Cessna had been depressed and thought he could be suicidal. He had a gun that they could never find. Well, this is three different men who all had their automobiles discovered in the Newfound Gap area. 
here's a little bit more on him. He was 45 years old when he went missing. The last date of contact was April the 27th, 2011. He was 5 foot 10 and 230 pounds. He was a white male with brown hair. His family members said that they could think of no reason why he would go there. The park learned that Cessna was missing when they checked the license plate of his 2009 Audi, which had been parked at Newfound Gap parking area for several weeks. The body of the man found, a 58-year-old man, was named David Harrington. This is dated May 26, 2011. The body of a Florida man was found Tuesday in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Evidence indicate that he shot himself after he parked his SUV in a pullout along Newfound Gap Road. Park rangers found his body with the help of search dogs about 250 yards from his car. The man is 58-year-old David Harrington, and after checking his license plate, they were able to contact family members, and the family members told them that they that he had been missing. They didn't have any idea how or why he was in the Smoky Mountains. Dental records determined that this was his, that it was him. And this was the same time as the search was going on for um, Christopher Cessna. And so I don't know what's going on in Newfound Gap. I don't know what's leading these men to this area. So just to wrap this video up, I'll just say that there was never any anything found of um, Derek Liu King. His, uh, he's still considered a missing person. I, I wondered myself, just a thought that I had was that maybe he left the gear behind in his car and went to scout out an area where he could set up a camp. Maybe all this gear that he bought, he did have that intention to go out there and to try to just hide away for a while. And maybe at the last minute he changed his mind. But his body's never been found and none of his remains or any of his belongings other than what was found in the car. In doing some reading and research and some of the comments that I read, there were a couple of people who wondered if maybe, and this is, you know, personal private business, but is it possible that these men went out there to meet someone, that maybe they were set up, robbed? I don't know if they, you know, the ones that they did find, I don't know if they found their wallets, if they had any money with them or anything like that. Were they killed or were they committing suicide and why did they choose that area like I said before could it have just been that it was very isolated and quiet and away from but there were hikers and people in this area and and I am going to continue to look for more information on this David Harrington because I could find nothing about him other than what was in one small article there were no photographs but I am going to continue to look. And I do have another video that I'm going to post very soon about another missing person who went missing in this area as well. And this would be a woman. But, and if I find anything about David Harrington, while well, before I post that video, I will include a little bit more about him. Thanks for watching.